how about some solutions? So using electric signals to, to look at that motor durability and those failure modes. I'm gonna go through those three examples I gave. How do we measure bearing currents? Now this is from an old textbook. It's got everything you need, but it, it's not the easiest to interpret. So I'm gonna walk through it. We have our stator that is highlighted by this outside slash lines. We have a rotor, the inside slash lines. Uh, the winding is kind of this cutaway here on the ends. And then these bearings are this like lot of slashes going on. So we can measure the common mode current. We have three phases coming into the motor. If we put a current sensor around those, or we have individual current sensors and sum them, we can see how much common mode current there is. So if we understand that common mode current, we can start to understand what's leading to voltages coming from rotor to stator and then from stator to ground. So we can start to see where these bearing currents are coming from. So we can measure that common mode current. Cool. We can measure the bearing currents IB. So again, if this is my bearing, I can put, see this little black dash here, I can put an isolation, electrical isolation between my bearing and my housing. I can put a conductor from my, my bearing to measurement or to ground and then measure that current. I can measure that bearing current. That's awesome. I can also measure my bearing voltage. This one's a lot easier. I just put a measurement on the bearing and a measurement on the housing, and I look at that differential. So we can start to understand what is my bearing voltage? What is my bearing current? We can see that voltage creep up over time, and then we can see it discharge through the bearing, creep up discharge. And we can start understanding what are the currents that bearing would experience. Um, we can measure temperature. As these bearings start to cook, their temperature is going to increase. And we can start to see, all right, I have this frequency of currents coming through my bearing. I have this temperature. It's really cool stuff. And we can look at increases in frequency of discharge or increases in amplitude of discharge in accordance or in, in parallel with increased temperatures. And again, identify that degradation over time and really see how that bearing behaves, how my totally efi total efficiency behaves, we can understand this whole system. Uh, again, I, I think this is pretty exciting stuff, given that, you know, 40% or so of motor failures are coming from bearings. With a little bit of uh, engineering, we can do a pretty good job at understanding what's happening.